what's happening guys welcome back so we're over here at my brother's workshop where we left you in the last video and we're now about to start working on getting these parts sorted out now i'm not, I'm not sure how much filming i'm going to be able to do talking to camera but we're basically going to be end boring which i'll explain a little bit about if i can um edge banding and then a bit of work on the saw mitering etc so let's just jump straight into it get some of these bits done and yeah we start putting it together so this bit of kit is called an end borer it's a bank of drill bits that are on the side that drill into the end of the boards. They're set at 32 mm centers, which is an industry standard. You've got a left hand and a right hand, which are the orange and black drill bits. We're using six mil and eight mil. On the drawing, it's got the dimensions that we need to work to, thickness of the boards, etc. Once your machine's set, press it up to the stop, press the pedal. The drills come in and drill the end of the board. And there you go, your six and eight mil holes are in the edge, ready to marry up with the other piece. This is the edge bander, so this is basically going to stick on this ABS edging uh, to the edge of the board to finish it off so it's all the same colour you've not got any end grain on view. This panel we've already made a start on and we've done the short edges and this is as it comes off the machine. You just have to give it a little tickle with a chisel to take the top burr off. But to do it, push it up to the stop. That high pitch noise is a plane, so it planes the edge of the board and takes off the thickness of the edging you want to put on to give you a nice clean edge. It runs through the machine and a load of magic happens. It cleans the top, cleans the bottom and cleans the end off. So there's a little burr like I mentioned. It comes off the end of the machine, looking like that. A little clean, job done. Good morning. So we're back at the workshop and we are now ready to move on to the next stage of building these units, which is gonna be very, very, very time consuming. So we've got the face panel laid on the bench. We've got the face panel for um, the top locker unit as well um, and what we need to do now is edge the internal edge of the openings that are in the panels so the first thing that we need to do because when it's cnc machined you have a radius in the corner like that um, you use a 12.7 mil diameter cutter and um, so you have a radius in the corner from where that obviously goes in and can't get right the way bang into the corner we need to square it off like that the way that we're going to do that is using a trend corner chisel which has got that little bit that slides out and uh, squares the corner out isn't absolutely perfect so we need to go back in with a chisel and with um, a bit of sandpaper on a block to square the corners out we've then got the edging on the roll which is here that we've brought back with us some tin snips and we'll cut ourselves a piece off so that yeah we've got roughly the right piece and then I've made something called a bench hook, which is this, basically, bit of wood there to stop it moving forward. Platform, bit that's recessed back, and another stop. You put your piece of edging up to that and over to the edge, sort of hanging over a bit. And you then run your plane along like that. And that then squares that cut up and makes it a nice clean edge. So that's now 90 degrees and 90 degrees. Gives you a nice edge so that when we've squared these corners out, you put up, put your edging in, up to the side, glue it on. We then plane this top edge off and clean that back to the face of the board. And repeat the process for all of those openings. Yeah, time consuming, but well worth it and it'll look good when it's done. So we'll get the GoPro on and let's get on. We're getting these bits edged. So I want to see this lot in the van and see if the colours are actually going to work. So like I said, first thing to do is go around, square all the corners off. Um, and then we're going to go in with a bit of sandpaper and just clean the burrs and tidy up the edges from where it's been CNC'd. Uh, this one part was tabbed, so there are little bits that we need to clean back. We're then into cutting the edging. Uh, we'll cut these in pairs, sort of top and bottom of each opening, and then we'll do the sides after. Now sticking it on, I'm using the same contact adhesive that we'd use for bonding the boards, but I'm just applying it with a paintbrush. Now you could spray it out with a spray gun, but it just means a lot of masking up, a lot of mess. And I just find that putting it on with a paintbrush is just a little bit easier. And then just stick them on, plane the edges off, repeat the process for the rest of the panel.
we've got a couple of hours work and we've got them all edge banded um so yeah looking looking real nice not the easiest of jobs it's like I said, a couple of hours to do um but those edges are now on and that panel is prepped putting them on obviously i showed you that we use a bench hook to square the edges up um, and just get them to the correct length then when you've stuck it on i'm using a block plane which the blade has, has obviously been sharpened and as you see there so i've put masking tape on it so you can run that edge basically on where are we looking on the face of the board so that bit's hanging off that bit's on the face of the board so that the metal won't scratch the face of the material and as you're looking at the planer blade the blade instead of it being like perfectly flat and straight to this panel it's ever so slightly on an angle obviously that's exaggerated but it's ever so slightly on an angle so you can basically move the plane side to side across it so you start off that side taking more off but you progressively move further and further over that way to plane less and less off it gives you ever so slight chamfer to it um, and it just means that you can clean it off perfectly flat to the laminate then we go over it with a block of wood and some sandpaper this is uh 240 grit sandpaper a little bit too much really wanting 320 um to then put an aris on the side so a very very slight radius soften the edge sand it back so it's perfectly flush easy enough to do when you know what you're doing i suppose so next thing we need to do i believe is screw this end piece onto this piece and then look at laminating the end i think that's the next bit anyway back to the gopro let's continue Good morning. So it's a few days later and in the last GoPro clips, you saw that we were on the bench um, and we started assembling the unit. Um, the GoPro died and then I spotted a couple of errors that we needed to sort out in that I bonded up 15 mil board instead of six mil board for the draw bases. So I've had to sort those out um, and I've made, I've bonded them to some material and then we we're going to screw, uh, screw them to the original panels and then we we're going to use a router with a router bit to make them the correct size but my router stopped working so we can't do any more on that um i've got the unit all together now and it's looking mega now the doors aren't set the doors aren't in the correct places the gaps and everything need altering um but yeah check this out hell yeah brother that's going to look absolutely mega when it's in the van. The hob, the hole needs cutting a little bit for the hob to get it to sit down properly. But grand scheme, we've obviously got the tool unit to go on the back still as well. Um, and there's an also, there's a rebate in here, um, which is those bits of wood that are on top of the polo. They've got to go in that front bit to create like a 50 mil band detail. Um, and I've had to order another sheet of laminate because in my error, I completely forgot to cut me a 50 or 60 mil rip off to laminate that long front edge so i've had to order a whole nother sheet for that which is irritating but we'd rather it be right so because we can't really build well we can get the back unit assembled um and then we really can't do a lot because we need a trimmer to be able to laminate it um, and get it ready to then edge band what we're going to move on to is getting the flooring down in the back of the van so that we can get that unit offered in place to just make sure it's gonna fit where we want it to fit so we've gone for this which isn't the nicest of floorings and it isn't the best of floorings it's just a, a lino that you just put in a yeah it's a cheap flooring it's cost me 50 quid for that whole bit to do the whole back of the van um we're going to change it at some point um 
for LV2 or something a little bit better, a little bit more hard wearing. But for now, that's what's going in. Um, this is all going to end up coming out again because I'm going to end up changing my mind and wanting to alter bits on it. I know what I'm like. So let's get it in. Let us get us go away. So we get the GoPro on and we'll see how well I can get this floor fit in because it is just a three metre by two metre bit of flooring. And we've got to cut it in to fit the van. And fitting lino is a nightmare. Right, let's see if we can do it. There we go, floor's down, cat's trying to get in. Floor's down, it's hardly A1 perfect. My cutting in really, really isn't the best. Um, I might go around and tidy them up later on. Um, but as much as I hate to say it, and it's not the way that I want to work, where it's not cut in the best is where it isn't going to be seen because covers and things are going to be. But I'm actually liking the floor more than I thought I would. I, I wasn't sure on it when I bought it and then when we got it back, I actually don't mind it. I do actually quite like it as a bit of a, yeah, against the carpet. I actually quite like it. Right, what I want to do now is just try the lower unit in that we've got assembled. It's taken all the doors and drawers, everything on it. I want to try that in now just to make sure everything looks like it's right, looks like it's okay. And then we'll offer the front panel of the top unit on as well just to check that's going to work because now we've obviously added thickness to the floor and i don't think it's going to fit i didn't uh yeah didn't allow for that and maybe i may have done it all tight so we'll see i might have to trim a bit off good morning look at the absolute state that we left the workshop in yesterday it was a sunday night so yeah can't really complain can i anyway we made some great progress yesterday i said all i was going to do was get the floor down that turned into playing around with this unit until about five o'clock last night but the units are in we did have a few issues that I had to sort out. So first issue we had, I put a centre line back in, which we basically do by measuring from the same point either side to find the centre. Uh, you can only really do it from the front wheel arch, so it's not an exact because at the front the, everything's slightly different. But we've got a centre line in, drawn, and this unit was sitting on an angle like that. Obviously that's very exaggerated. It was about six or seven mil on the wonk. So. I've had to play with the scribes that go back to the wall um, and get the unit, the front end, to kink back in. Now, that problem could have easily been avoided had we ran it out of raw NDF again and tried it in the van. But in my rush to get it done, because we haven't got a lot of time um, and save a bit of money, because there'd have been another probably 80 or 90 quid in running it out of that material, probably more, um, we didn't bother. We just sent it <laughs> with this one. They weren't major changes. Um, we just had to plane a little bit off to bring it back. So it's not a major, major problem. Another problem that we had that, I, again, I should have thought about is the floor. So the floor is about four mil thick, um, meaning that when we put the floor down and put the units in, everything was about four mil too high, which doesn't sound a lot. But when you're building it to tolerances like we are, and it is tight up there, it wouldn't fit in. So I've had to plane the bottom of the unit and all the divisions back and to do that we had to take formal off it all and to do that we just used an electric planer set at one mil ran it past four times in choice directions so we didn't smash the face of the laminate off um but yeah it worked it was easy enough they weren't major major issues that we got over them pretty quickly and pretty easily um worktop edging that's on now uh, the laminate for that is on its way so the plan for the day is going to be we'll get this unit out on the bench and we're going to strip it down, get it edged, get it laminated, get that bit done, finished and ready to go back in. We'll get this all out, get the worktop off, get that on the bench, get it all glued, all the mitres and everything glued, that end. And then we will, uh, yeah, laminate it, edge that. And then I'm hoping my plan is going to be that to this today, really, I want those units back in the van, done finished and not got to come out again meaning all we've then got to do is um the electrics in the cupboard connect the hob up connect the sink up 
um, put the gas bottle in, which I've, I've ordered, that's all on its way. And then we can get on tomorrow, hopefully, we're starting to build the seating and bed bit down at the bottom. But first thing I need to do is tidy this mess up. So I shall see you in a minute when we get on with that unit. And there we go, a few hours later, and that back unit is now all sorted. Um, shelf and everything, obviously it's all built back up. This end has been laminated, uh, door is mounted on and works. This end has all been um, laminated, it just needs a good clean. Top is now all laminated as well. Doors are on and I've, oh, I need one more lock. I've missed one lock off, but doors are on and do what doors need to do. So I'm gonna go in now, have some lunch, sort my life out. Then we'll get that unit out onto the uh, these bits of wood down here. Sand the edges, get that all prepped ready for when I get the phone call to say that the laminate's here, then we'll go and pick that up. We'll get that edged and hopefully, I'm still thinking, fingers crossed, today, we're still gonna have these done and then fitted to the van by the end of the day. Right, they're done, ish. I am so pleased with how they have turned out and the colors and the way that they go together and everything looks absolutely mega. You can see there we're missing a latch, a handle. Uh, yeah, didn't order enough. I need to get one more, which isn't gonna be a problem because we might need some for the bed anyway. So I'll get some of them ordered, um, but yeah, done, finished, built, ready to go in the van, looking absolutely. Mega, I know I always say it about stuff, but they look so good. Right, I'm gonna get the wife, chuck them in. I'm not gonna film it, because I think she's probably in her pajamas. Um, but yeah, cause it's, what is it, 20 to nine now or something. But I says I was gonna get it done today, so I was gonna get it done today. So I'm gonna throw these in, and then, uh, yeah, see you in the morning. Um, and who knows what we'll do tomorrow. Good morning. So as you can see, the units are fitted into the van and looking absolutely trick. 
So I want to say a massive, massive thank you to Bossway Conversions for sponsoring the past two episodes on building these cabinets for inside the van. Bossway Conversions do camper van conversions, they do VIP van conversions. Um, if you need anything for building your van, be it a unit set that will fit in your van, the ply lining for the walls, raw boards as I had them for you to make your own units completely from scratch, or pre-finished boards like I had before they went on the CNC machine, ready for you to build your own units, knock-on edging, ABS edging, all the iron mongers to go that they can do you a complete kit form or as little or as much as you want. They'll also do you a full van conversion from an empty van to you turning up with a bag and holidaying when you collect it. If you've not already, go over and follow them on Instagram. Also check out the website, which is linked below. Um, Glenn is really, really helpful. So even if you've got questions about something to see how they can help you out or how they could benefit your build, go and check them out. Very, very helpful guys. So a massive thank you to Bossway Conversions for sponsoring the past two episodes. Also, I want to say a massive thank you to my brother, Reform Manufacturing, for CNCing this all out and uh, putting up with me, being in and out there every five minutes. Can I just do this? Can I just do that? I know you've got a business to run, mate. Thank you very much. Right, shall we show you around these units? Because they look really good. There we go. The units are in around the back and we're scribed in around all those edges into the walls. I've got to be honest, I'm not 100% happy with them. We should have templated it again. Got a bit of a gap there, which is annoying. A bit of a gap there, and there's a bit of a gap there, which is really, really irritating. But yeah, the beauty of a dark material against a dark material, you can't really see it. So they're in. Now, this door, people are going to say it's a bit pointless because you can't get to the shelf, but it's still another form of access in. Obviously, you'll need to clean in because maybe and may have not cleaned it. One down here as well, little, little storage cupboard oh, at the back. And up here, we've got a drawer which has been designed so that will still open when the seat is all built and in place. Uh, the idea being well, that was we're going to put toiletries or something in that one when me and I were discussing it. Um, tall unit up here, we've got a pair of doors which go into your, basically we will use that as like a wardrobe. Um, door down here with some shelves in just for stuff. Three drawers, nice little one at the top. Again, that one will still open when the bed is fully out. And there, and then a shallower one at the bottom because we've got the electrics behind it, as I mentioned. Another drawer, uh, door, sorry, there, which there's nothing in at the moment. We've got the gas locker to go in there, the water bottles, and then we'll see if we can try and get some form of a shelf in there. Um, I want to put everything under slung, but at the minute, the time and everything we haven't really got. So for now, we're just going to get it all all in there and then you've got another drawer just here which is a shallow drawer for cutlery etc in there fridge is all mounted in it's not 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 um screwed in yet but it's pushed in place so fridge is in there and these are brilliant because you can open them both ways and take the door completely off transport hq supplied us with that transport hq also supplied us with this the hob and sink which again isn't fixed in or finished by any means but it's sat in place where it's going to go. Another big thank you to Transport HQ for sponsoring the build pretty much from the beginning. Um, yeah, if you're going to get anything from Transport HQ, camper glass, Navis wheels, solo spencer, anything like that, use the code Chambers5 to get yourself 5% off your next order. So yeah, units are in. Looking mega. Well happy with how they've turned out. The floor isn't as offensive either as i thought it was going to be when i first saw it and it got suggested in the flooring shop but that is going to be that one over and done with guys we've got the units in and i need to tidy up as standard as ever tidy up this absolute mess that i left it in last night and we need to start cutting those sheets of laminate up uh, sheets of plywood up and those sheets of laminate up to try and make this bed we're going to build an l-shaped bed or seat that folds out into a bed in the next episode so Hopefully you've enjoyed this one then, guys. Until next time, enjoy. Enjoy.